adoration Thank you, Lord. over yourself this morning. Yes, I am. As you place your right hand over your life and declare to the enemy, declare to everything, every odds, everything that is against your life. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me. quiet place shut in with God in a secret place there in his presence to hold in his peace finding more power to run in this race to be shut in Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Yes, Lord. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I am a child of God. Declare that in the atmosphere of the world. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Will you put your hands together and give the Lord a big hand clap of worship this morning? Put your hands together and give the Lord a big hand clap of worship this morning. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I am a child of God. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning to worship Him with the saints of God. And to those on social media, we thank God for His love. We thank Him for bringing us here this morning. I'm going to read for us morning's lesson from Hebrews chapter 3. I'm 
going to read the whole chapter. I'm reading from the King James Version. For those who want to follow in that version. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath built a the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by same man, by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those which were to be spoken after. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, Prove me and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved that, excuse me, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren lest there be any of you in evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, while it is said, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in uh, the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. How be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses? But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned? whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Praise God. Here and that the reading of God's word, may he add his blessings as we say, Amen. Praise be to God. Thank you so much, Sister Kim and Sister Janet, for keeping us safe, corona safe. Glory to God. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Keep standing for a brief, brief moment as I invite you to a time of prayer. But let me pause to say welcome to each and every one. Again, I want to specially recognize um, Sister Bim. I and Sister Bim is here. Praise God. See her right at the back there. Praise God. She was away from us back in Nigeria for a little while. And she's now with us. We are so grateful to God that she is back home. Glory be to God. Give God the praise. Give God all the glory. Good to see you, Sister Bim. I hope you bring back some food from Nigeria for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 
Glory to God. Good to see you all, brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming again. Um, as we continue to worship God in this sanctuary, we realize that we're not ignorant of the fact that the coronavirus is still wreaking havoc and raging rampant. Therefore, we want to encourage you to please adhere to all the necessary protocols that we have in place as well as those that the authorities have put in place for us personally. Because last thing I want is for any one of you to be sick or have this virus, any one of us. And I want to take a few moments just to pray. You know, it's this morning as I drive to church, it occurs to me that sometimes I feel like we have become so accustomed to the new normal that we stop praying about the virus um, being destroyed and over with. Are you with me? And so we, we, we almost have gotten to that point where we just say, let's live with it. And that's not God's will for us. We know that. Amen. The Bible said that God wish, the wish that the Bible said, I wish that you prosper and be what? In good health, even as your soul prospers. So in a concert fashion, I want you to join me this morning as we take a brief moment to just pray against the continuation of this virus that is wreaking havoc on people's lives and, you know, making us all uncomfortable. We are going to declare it in the name of Jesus because the Bible said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, they will seek my face. They will turn from their wicked ways. Hallelujah. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive the sins and I will what? Heal the land. God, our Father, we come to you this morning, Lord God recognizing lord that it is your will that we are well it is your will that we are protected and are safe mighty god it is your will lord that we be in good health and prosper even as our souls prosper and so this moment lord we take the opportunity and the time to to thank you first and foremost oh god that you have kept us in the midst of it all you have kept us safe you have surrounded us you have kept true to your words oh god that you will allow angels to encamp around those that fear you lord you have said it in your word that we he who abide under the shadow of the almighty shall be covered and so we thank you we worship you and we honor you we thank you so far god that it could have even been worse but god you have kept us you have kept us and we worship and honor and thank you lord we give you glory in this moment tonight today but lord we recognize also that you said we should pray and not be anxious but we should make our request be made known unto you and the peace of God that pass, a lot, pass it all understanding will keep our hearts and minds. And so this moment, Father, we are making our request known. We want a, an end to this virus. We are speaking, God, that you will allow, God, this virus to die a, a quick death in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are declaring right now all over the world that your hand will move again. I know that there is a purpose and so God let your purpose, your purpose be fulfilled in the name of Jesus and God Almighty those who are to be saved those who are to come to you will come those who are to get right God those who are to walk right God we are open but we ask you Father God to give us one more chance we repent today we repent of our sins we confess God that we have built idols for our own selves in our own lives our homes have become our idols individual and personalities have become our idols our possessions have become our idols but God in the name of Jesus we are crying before the altar right now we are weeping at the altar God because we need a revival sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit we confess God 
that we have gone our own ways we have sought our own comfort instead of the truth of God but in the name of Jesus we stand guilty as charge and we ask that you will wash us thoroughly blot out our transgressions oh God almighty pardon our iniquity and like David says restore unto us the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within us God our leaders are failure Lord church leaders political leaders educational leaders God the world oh Canada has failure Toronto has failure Ontario has turned from you but God we repent and ask for a reversal in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we repent, God. We repent that we have treated you unfairly, God. We have disregarded your will. But today, God, we ask that you will cleanse our heart and make us right and fresh and anew, God, and bring us closer to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody clap your hands and give God praise in the house. He is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy of the great praise. He is worthy of the honor. And today I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. Thank you so much. The book that was read, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 3. I want to just read a verse, two verses as a matter of fact. I'll read verse 6. But Christ is faithful. As a son over God's house. And we are his house. If indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Verse 14. We have come to share in Christ. If indeed we hold our original conviction, or again the word confidence, firmly to the very end. Glory to God. We have come to share in Christ. If indeed we hold our original conviction. Tell somebody, holding on. Hold on to the end. Hallelujah. Hold on to the end. Father, I thank you again for your words. I ask that as I minister, God, that you would take my life, my heart, my heart, my entire being, and use me as you see fit. God, I pray that our hearts will be open for your words today, and you will speak to us loud and clear. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated once again in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord today. It's a rainy day. And, you know, in my cultural background, rain symbolizes blessings. Even though sometimes it comes with flooding. Amen. Glory to God. But thanks be to God that we are alive today. There is hope in the Lord. And I want to talk to you today just about that. Today, the subject of this word that God has laid on my heart is the secret to true hope in hard times. The secrets to true hope in hard times. Glory be to God. In 1981, the successful millionaire, Eugene Land, was asked to address a class of 59 sixth graders in East Harlem, New York. Now, as he, go, as he went into that um, school, after asking the principal, uh, after observing the kids, he asked the principal, how many of these children are likely to go to college? The, the, the answer he received was dismal. The answer that he received caused him to be in despair because the principal said, 
one might make it to college. Finally, and, and this is 59 kids, one, the principal, said might make it to college. The final moment came when he, Eugene stood before the students, still wondering how to even get eye contact and their attention. I don't know about you, but I've been to, I've taught in high school and I've taught guidance and counseling in, in primary school from grade one to grade six. And, uh, you know, the school that I was in, in Maypen, um, Clarindon, was the largest English-speaking primary school in the Caribbean at the time. And when I am going to the grade one, I dread because I cannot seem to get their attention. There are times when I go to class and I, and I, I wish I had Sister Blake with me because she just have a unique way of keeping their attention. And, but Eugene tried to get these students' attention and he couldn't. And so in a moment of inspiration, he set aside all his notes and all that he was about to present. And he told each student, each student, um, I will pay your college tuition, every one of you, if you stay in school and do well. Can you guess what happened? Well, that might have been the case, but I'm way ahead. At the end of the day, after they graduated, an amazing 90% of the class graduated from high school and were on their way to college. 90%. Why was this a reality? Why did this happen? Because somebody gave them hope. Somebody gave these students hope. In fact, one of the students commented, I had something to look forward to. Something to wait for. Something that was waiting for me. It was a golden feeling. This man gave these students a golden opportunity that before they didn't think they had. And so in Hebrews 3, we are introduced, first of all, foremost, to the word hope in verse, verse um, 4. Verse 6, rather. We are introduced to this word hope, which the writer makes reference to throughout this book six other times, giving us a total of seven times that the writer mentioned the word hope. It must be an indication of the focus and the point of which the author is trying to get across to his readers. He sees this as an anchor or the basis for his exhortation to the readers of this book. This is a hope, brothers and sisters, which waits, which awaits every one of us as believers. We are privileged and we are party to this hope that the writer spoke about. This hope that will change anyone's life. And regardless of the hope, hopeless situation that you are facing. I'm talking about a hope that changes everything. Oh, somebody praise God. The hope that I'm speaking of today is a hope that changes. Glory be to God Almighty. I don't know about you, but several years ago, I came upon that hope, brothers and sisters. And it is that hope this morning that I can testify has changed everything everything for me. Brothers and sisters, I wouldn't be before you today speaking the word of God if I didn't come into contact with that hope in Christ Jesus. Oh, give God praise. Somebody said this hope is what uh, is like medicine. There is no medicine like hope. E Emil Brunner said what oxygen is to the lungs, such hope is to the meaning of life. It is clear that the world today is sick at this time and need this hope, brothers and sisters. That is why I want to talk to us for the next few minutes about the secrets to 
true hope in hard times. And today you can call me a hope dealer. Glory be the God Almighty. I didn't say dope dealer. I say you can call me today a hope dealer. Praise God Almighty. I'm dealing hope today. And I'm hooked on hope today. You see, there's too much gloom and doom that's happening around us. And all some of us need, brothers and sisters, to, to enjoy our life, even in this time, is a little sense of hope. Glory be to God. You don't know what hope can do to a person. Oh, God Almighty, who feels like his life or her life is as, hen as ended and there is nothing more. I think of that man at the pool of Bethesda, hallelujah, that was there for many years. And every time somebody else went before him, after a while, he must have gotten to a point where he feel like there is no hope for him. I think of that man that stood, that was seated and placed every day at the gate, um, beautiful, hallelujah, going to the temple. He was crippled and paralyzed from his from birth. And every day the priest and the Levites and the temple guards and everybody would pass by. And he had no hope except somebody placed something in his hand. But one day, hallelujah, Peter and John, hallelujah, they were coming from Pentecost. They came to church uh, and they got hope or they were in the upper room uh, and they got hope uh, and they decide to go to church uh, and spread that hope. And so as they got to the entrance, uh, the man said, give me something. But this time when they used to pass this man, uh, they didn't have anything. Uh, perhaps they gave him material stuff, uh, but this time they realize that this man doesn't need another handout. What this man need is a hand up. Praise God. What we need, brothers and sisters, is hope that will not give us hand out, but a hope that will give us a hand up. Glory to God. So this time when Peter looked at the man, he said, look at us because there is something different today. He said to the man, silver and gold have I none, but we have something that you need uh, most of all. Brothers and sisters, we must become hope dealers uh, because there are people at our work place uh, who are at the brink of giving up. There are people at your home, uh, in your family that think that material things is what's going to keep them and what's going to give them hope. Uh, but we must let them know we have the real thing. Glory to God. We have the real thing. Uh, we have the real hope. And each time we come to church, we come to get another kilo. Glory to God. To take back out uh, and deal it out. Oh, somebody praise God this morning. I said, I'm a hope dealer. I'm a hope dealer. The first secret to hope in hard time, brothers and sisters, based on my text, is focusing our thoughts on Jesus. Focusing our thoughts on on Jesus. If you're following me on Wednesday, you would have heard me talked about glory to God or preach and share from this particular text. And I shared with you how the writer has been com doing comparison and contrasting of Jesus to the Old Testament prophets, Jesus to angels. And in this passage, we now find him making a comparison between Jesus and Moses. Glory to God. And for, you, for those who understand the Bible, you will realize that, that for the Jewish people, Moses is one of those significant names. And they at this time were struggling to believe. They were struggling to see who should they put their hope or where should they put their hope. And so they would have remembered the angels were God's messengers. The prophets were God's messengers. And Moses was God's liberator. And so as they came under pressure for accepting Jesus, they were wondering and struggling whether we should go back to look at Moses instead of Jesus. Go look back at angels instead of Jesus. Or go look back at the prophets instead of Jesus. And so the writer took the time to explain to them why that idea is ludicrous. Why that idea 
here is, um, is not sensible because at the end of the day, Jesus is superior and more sufficient than any of these significant things that they have in their history. Oh, somebody praise God. I know you had a testimony. I know you had a grandmother. I know you had some great leaders. But brothers and sisters, your faith cannot be in your leaders. Your faith cannot be in your grandmother's faith. It must be in Jesus Christ. Because there is no other name under heaven where men must be saved. But by the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody help me praise God. Oh, hallelujah. So the writer came to verse chapter 3. And he said, therefore, based on all that I've said to you about Jesus. The fact that Jesus defeats sin. The fact that Jesus defeat, defeat the devil. The fact that Jesus defeat death. Based on that, oh, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus. That's what the NIV said. Fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. Oh, glory be to God. Help me praise God right there, right there. Just lift up God and praise him. Why should we fix our thoughts on Jesus? Why should we focus our thoughts on Jesus? Because Jesus is the only one in history and will ever be that has defeated the devil, that has defeated sin, and that has defeated death. Oh, somebody praise God. If anybody I'm going to put my hope in, if anyone I'm going to put my trust in, brothers and sisters, it got to be Jesus. Because there's no other human being, there's no other force in the universe that can say I've defeated the devil, I've defeated sin, and I've defeated death, hell, and the grave. Oh, somebody help me praise God. All of which are hope killers. But today God has called us to be hope dealers. There's none more qualified than Jesus to offer hope. Jesus is not just the champion of love. But he's also the champion of hope. You see, this letter of Hebrew was written to a group of people who were going through a time of testing and persecution. They were losing, brothers and sisters, hope. They, they were facing tremendous difficulty and persecution because of their faith. Therefore, the Hebrew writer encouraged them to hold on to their courage and their hope. Glory be to God. He said, look and fix your thoughts on Jesus. He's our apostle. He's the high priest. Let me tell you. You see, the high priest in the Old Testament is the only one that was allowed to go into the holy of holies, the holy place, uh, and do the ministry on behalf of the people. And, and aside from the high priest going into this holy place and offer sacrifice for himself first and for the people, the people would be living in their sins. But the fact is each year the high priest would have to go in there and make a sacrifice afresh. But we have a high priest, brothers and sisters. Oh, glory to God, who has gone into the holy place in the heavens, not on earth, not in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm. Who have gone into a holy place and himself made sacrifice on our behalf. A sacrifice that he doesn't have to make again. It's once and for all. Oh, glory to God. But I can imagine each year when the high priest going into the temple. And if somebody said, you know, last year I stole something. Last year I killed a man. He can only go in there and offer the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Um, with no empathy or no idea of what it really means to be in that situation but glory be to God he does not understand or experience the guilt that is upon you or the way your heart is broken in two but we are told in Hebrews uh, that Jesus is the high priest uh, that is touched with the feelings uh, of our infirmities uh, brothers and sisters I told you that the reason God sent Jesus uh, the reason God put on flesh uh, and came to earth uh, is for you to understand uh, that he know what you are going through he's been there with you he's been there before 
for. He's not aloof to your problem. He's not unaware of your pain. He's not unaware of the way you feel when you mess up, when you want to do good and evil present itself. God knows the temptation, the pressure. Oh, glory to God. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane as he was about to face the toughest time in his life. And he prayed, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But he held on. He said, nevertheless, oh, not my will, but thy will be. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is saying, you can go on. I'm heading you on. I'm, I'm encouraging you on because I know where you are. Oh, there's hope, there's hope, there's hope, there's hope. And so Jesus, the, the writer said he was faithful to the end. He was faithful to the one who appointed him. Just as Moses was faithful in all God's house, Jesus had been found worthy of greater honor, however, than Moses, just as the builder of the house has more honor than the builder. I explained that on Wednesday night, so please go on YouTube and find that, that text. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything fix your focus on Jesus not on the political system not on the health system even I'm not saying you mustn't um, naturally respect and work with the political system and the health system don't go to your doctor and say pastor said you must put your faith in doctors no that's not what I'm saying I'm saying if the doctor, if you have an ailment or if you feel sick, go and get your checkup at the doctor. But at the end of the day, you must always realize that the doctor has to depend on God. Hallelujah. And there are some point in every medication or medicine that it can only work so far and no more. Hallelujah. In fact, if God don't allow the medication that the doctor give you to work, it's not going to accomplish its job. So even as you go to the doctor and you get the medication, in fact, before you go to the doctor, say, God, give me the right doctor this morning. Let the right nurse see me this morning. And when the right doctor see you and the right nurse see you, you say, let the right medication be given to me, God. You pray every point because you trust God to provide guidance. Oh, somebody praise God. You see, when the, when the British, you see, the Israelites were like Britain. When, when you ask the British people, who is the greatest Brit, Britain of all times, you might likely get them say, Sir Winston Churchill. And he's usually at the top of the list. If you were to ask an American, who was the greatest American, hallelujah, they might reply George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. If you, it is the same way if you would ask a Jewish man um, or somebody in the first century AD who the greatest Jew was, without doubt they would say Moses. Because they love Abraham. Abraham is the Genesis, but Moses is the liberator. Every child knew about the deliverance of Egypt and the ten plagues that God. Every child knew about the ten commandments that Moses received from God. And so Moses would be seen as that great man. Because Moses was the supreme figure of history for the Israelites. He, res he, res he rescued them from slavery and gave them God's law. But in this passage, the writer of Hebrew describes to the Jewish Christians how Jesus is greater than Moses. His argument is that in spite of the greatness of Moses, Jesus is in completely a different league than Moses. Jesus is the centerpiece of everything we believe. Without him, brothers and sisters, our faith would be useless. Paul said it this way, if Christ is not raised from the dead, then our preaching and our living is in vain. He has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses. Moses was faithful as a servant, but hear what the Bible said. Jesus is what? Faithful as a son and owner of the house. Glory be to God. Owner of all things. This is the reason we can boast as verse 6 says. Verse 6 tells us that 
um, we should what? But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. And we are his house if indeed we, are, we hold firmly to our confidence and hope in the glory. King James said, if we hold to confidence. Let me tell you what the King James Version said. It says, but Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence? And this word, he said, the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. And one translation used the word boasting of our hope to the end. Brothers and sisters, because of who Jesus is, we can boast about our hope. This is the entire emphasis of the author as he speaks about it over and over. In Hebrews chapter 6, in Hebrews chapter 7, um, in Hebrews chapter 10, and in Hebrews chapter 11. You see, hope here refers to the sure consummation of our faith. The sure completion of our faith. In other words, we're not having faith and believing in vain. In this passage, the writer quoted from um, Psalm 95 as he talked about the history of Israel. Because Psalm 95 um, recounts and recall the children of Israel and how they acted and they behaved and what resulted from their behavior. And so the writer, in order to explain to them the importance of fixing their focus on Jesus Christ, begin to bring them back to this text and begin to tell them what, what this psalm says. And he told them, listen, he said, it is important that you know this. As the Holy Spirit says, and I like how he puts that, because you must understand that the word of God, it, that is why it is, cons it is called God-breathed, inspired. Because it is the Holy Spirit that God spoke through. And, and in this passage, in this book actually, verse chapter 1, it tells us that in the past God spoke through the prophets. And now he's speaking through Jesus. And so as the writer brings the people back to Psalm 95, he said, as the Holy Spirit says. Wherefore, this is what King James says. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today if you will hear his voice. Harden not your heart. But before I move on to my second point, the life we live is greatly influenced by the thoughts we have. And I want you to understand that. The life we live is greatly influenced by the thoughts we have. That's why the writer said, think about Jesus. Focus your thoughts on Jesus. You see, what you focus on your thoughts on is what will dominate the life you live. So if your life is focused on fear and on all of that, then you're going to live your life in fear. If you focus your life on hurt that people have done to you, then you're going to be living your life in hurt. If you focus your life on unforgiveness and and guilt, then that's how you're going to live your life. But if you focus your heart and your life on Jesus, brothers and sisters, your life will never be the same. No wonder the Apostle Paul says, oh, all that I have gained, all that I have had, I count it but loss and nothing for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Paul said, I'm not going to spend my days watching the news and talk about Corona. I'm not going to spend my days thinking about all the conspiracies that are around. I'm not going to spend my days talking about all kinds of things that could happen bad or this is happening bad or no, Paul says, I'm going to spend my days uh, focusing on Jesus, uh, who is the author and the finisher. Oh, Hebrews 12 says, uh, brothers and sisters, let us lay aside uh, the thoughts that weigh us down uh, and the sin that weigh us down uh, and look unto Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher 
Oh, somebody give God praise. I want to move on, but this, this, this point is holding me. Because the Apostle Paul, he said, brothers and sisters, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pure, whatever things are holy, whatever things are good report, think on these things. And that's all you get when you think about Jesus. You get, you get things that are lovely, things that are of good report, things that are holy. Oh, somebody praise him in the house. Oh, oh just, just, just eyeball your neighbor and say, start thinking like Jesus. Oh, just eyeball your neighbor and say, neighbor, look and think like Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I know I'm excited. I'm excited because this word hope, I tell you, I'm a hope dealer today. And, and I've, ever, I've ever seen guys that look like they are dope dealers. They look excited. They don't look like they are, they are, they are, they are puny, puny and something. So I'm hope dealer today. So that's why I'm so excited. The, the dictionary describes hope like this. To have a wish to get or to do something or for something to happen or be true. Especially something that seems possible or likely. However, hope from the world's point of view is just what the dictionary describes. The world sees hope as a wish, as a desire. Hope, I hope it rains tomorrow. I hope tomorrow will be warmer. That's how the world sees it. Uh, it's, it's a longing for something that may or may not take place. The Bible teaches us a vastly different definition of hope. There's an idea of this that we, I find in, in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17 verse 7. Here's what Jeremiah said. Blessed is the man that trusts the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Let me read that again because it, it, it slipped by you. Blessed is the man that trusts the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. If it's something I'm wishing for, then the Lord cannot be my hope. But if it's something I know exists, then the Lord is my hope. Oh, glory. Are you getting my point? The world say that hope is merely a fond wish or a desire. But the world used, used for hope, uh, what the word used for hope, in, or what the Bible the word that the Bible used for hope tells us a very different picture. It's a Greek word that's elpis, which means expectation. It teaches us that hope is a deep self and settled confidence that God will keep his promise. So here's the difference. I have an expectation this evening that when I go home, Sister Blake will cook a good meal for me. That's not a, that's not a wish. That's not a, that's not a simple desire. It's going to happen, brothers and sisters. Are you with me today? Because it has happened over and over and over and over. And she has delight in doing it. It's the same thing with God. What God promised you, you can expect. It with all the fiber of your being brothers and sisters and that's what I'm saying to you it's not wishful thinking but absolute confidence in a future event based on the promises of God no wonder the song writer puts it this way standing on the promises of Christ my king through eternal ages let his praises ring I'm standing on the promises of God because the promises of God they cannot fail oh somebody praise the name of Jesus you see, many of us, including myself, ad have adapted Caesarius' famous line. While there is life, there is hope. But in contrast to that, the great preacher and writer, John Bunyan, gives a better insight to this hope when he wrote, when he wrote sorry, hope is never ill when faith is well. And then he said, I believe where there is faith, there is hope. Oh, glory to God. Where there is what? Faith, there is hope. 
let me, let me, let me, let me, let me take my time and break it down for you. Because Caesarea said, where there is what? Life, there is hope. But what? What Bunyan said? John Bunyan said, where there is what? Faith, there is hope. And if you believe that, you will, it will draw your mind right back to Mary and Martha. When Lazarus was dead for three days, oh glory to God. If we believe, Caesarea, that where there is life, there is hope, then there is no hope for Lazarus. Because he has been dead for three days. But Jesus showed up and said to these ladies, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Just believe. Oh, somebody praise God Almighty. Just believe. I believe that even when I die and I and I'm my body is resting in the grave because of the faith that I have in Jesus Christ, I'm gonna live again. So where there is faith, there is hope. Oh, somebody give God praise. This is the type of hope that Job had when he faced the worst of time. In Job 19 verse 25, Job said, For I know that my Redeemer live, and at the last days I will, he will stand upon the earth. Brothers and sisters, Job had lost everything. His sons and his daughters, his supplies, his lands, everything, his, his health was failing. Job had lost everything. But Job looked at his friends who came up to accuse him and Job said I know I'm not guessing her I'm not desiring her I'm not just wishing her Job said I know that my redeemer lives oh do you know your redeemer lives today do you know your redeemer is alive today Job went on to say, after my skin has been thus destroyed hallelujah yet in my flesh I shall see God are you with me today? I, I know where there is faith. There is hope for somebody today. All you need, it doesn't matter how dead your relationship is. Where there is faith, there is hope. It doesn't matter how dead your relationship with your child or your husband is. Where there is faith, there is hope. It doesn't matter how dead your, your prospects of a new job is. Where there is faith, there is hope. It doesn't matter how dead your health situation is. Where there is faith, there is is hope. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody praise God with me. Hallelujah. And first John 3 verse 2. The Bible said, Beloved, we are God's children and now. And what will we and, and we do not know yet. Um, it does not yet appear what we will be. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because we shall what? See him be to God. Hebrews 10 verse 23 and 25 tells us uh, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess uh, for we he who promised is faithful. Let us consider therefore how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I know because of what's happening, we can't meet as we should. I'm not saying you must um, defy the authorities either. I want you to be clear about that. That you must obey those who are set over you. And the authorities and the protocols. But brothers and sisters, don't forsake the assembly of the brethren. If, if it means that you're going to connect with the brethren online, on Zoom. That is part of being a part of the fellowship in a time like now. Are you with me, church? So it may not be physically coming together, but don't forsake the assembling of us together. Whether it's on Zoom, whether it's on technology, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Make sure you're a part of the fellowship. Let me go to the second point. Lord, I lose time. My time is gone. But I promise you I'll be done in about five, 10 minutes. Or should I go 15? All right, I'll do 10. The, the, the second point is the secret to having hope in hard time is following God in faith with your whole heart. Following God in faith with your whole heart. The 
first point was that you must focus your thoughts on Jesus. And the second point is following God in faith with your whole heart. In spite of the great high moment of deliverance from Egypt. Think about it. The God of heaven sent his deliverer Moses. He said, Moses, go and talk to Pharaoh. He's going to harden his heart. But don't worry, I have something for him. And God allowed Moses to do ten plagues before, before Egypt and before the children of Israel. That wasn't enough. God bring them out, take them out, destroy completely, annihilate, maybe only fear and a few of his gangs left. left. And they got to the Red Sea and they, they once again doubted God and said, how are we going to make it? And God said, Moses, what do you have in your hand? And Moses said, a rod. And God said, well, stretch it out and walk through. And the Bible said Moses lift up his rod and the, 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 the Red Sea parted. And the people of Israel walked through on dry ground. Not a water. Not a water on their bodies. The, when the Egyptian was coming, God closed it back and killed, destroyed the enemy. Because he told them, the Egyptian you see today, you will see them no more. And he was serious about that. The people of God were brought through the wilderness, given water from the rock, given manna from above. They were covered with cloud by day and a pillow of fire by night. So they had their own hydro system, hydroelectric system. They didn't have to ask their neighbor for electricity. And guess what? It was free. They had their own keg restaurant going with them from Egypt to the promised land. What a God. But yet, mm, the people of God fallen away in a time of testing in the desert. Uh, there's too, too much failing, but let me just go straight up to when they agreed to Kedish Barnea as they were about to enter the promised land. They came to a spot where God decides he's going to give them a glimpse of what is in store for them. But you see, God's not going to give you a glimpse of what's in store for you without also giving you a hint of the trouble that you'll go through. And a lot of times that's where we fail because we want the grapes, but we don't want the grits. <laughs> oh, glory to God. That just came to me. I don't know where that came from. Don't even know what that means, but we want the grapes, but we don't want the grits. And so when the people got there and God sent, God in, well, Moses decided to send 12 spies into Canaan to check it out. And they came back and they said, Moses, we saw what God said. But there's something else as if God didn't told them that there were people in there that they were going to have to run out and fight out and tra chase out and some of them killed too. God told them. And they came back and they said, Moses, 10 of them said, Moses, but there are giants in the land. And I don't know if they had gone there and they had stopped them and said, guess what? We're coming to invade your land, but tell us how you think about us. Have you ever thought about that? I don't know if they had done that, but for some reason they came back and said, Moses, in their mind, we are like grasshopper to them. So they must have stopped somebody and say, you know what, we're coming to invade. God said we must get this land, but how do you think about us? And they say, you guys are grasshoppers. Must be because they went to spy. But there were two guys, Caleb and Joshua, who said, we believe God. And even though we're going to have to face the grits with the grapes, we have a God that can deal with any grit. Are you with me today, church? So the writer is warning against doing the same thing that the Israelites did just before they received their promises, their promise. See to it, brothers and sisters, he said, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turn away from the living God. But bless, but, but trust God. He said the Israelite did it. I don't even have the time to go through it. I encourage you to spend some time to, to go through this book. But let me just quickly give you some. He said, 
today if you hear his voice, do not, do not harden your heart as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness. You could call this message a word from the wilderness. This writer was giving them a word from the wilderness that you mustn't get into that kind of mess that these guys got into where they didn't believe God for 40 years. God took care of them. God was with them. But God became angry with this generation because what their heart wasn't in it. Their faith wasn't there. And when it was time for them to trust God, they failed. God had to say, you don't know my ways. You see, that is the problem. You see, faith is about knowing God's ways. It's not, it's, 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 it's knowing that God is a God of his word. Knowing that he is a, is a God that is, um, the word I'm using, looking for is, is a God of integrity. He's a God of integrity. If he promise you something, the Bible says he's not a man that he should lie. But let me move on quickly to the next point, the third and final point. is not only that you should focus your thoughts on Jesus. Not only should you, glory to God, put your faith or fix your faith. Follow God in faith with all your heart. But you should fellowship with people who encourage you continuously. People who encourages you continuously. Here's what the verse 13 says. Verse 13 says, brothers and sisters, um, let me read it. But encourage one another. So verse 12, he says, see to it that brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, um, unbelieving heart that turn away from the living God. But encourage one another, what? Daily. As long as it is called day, today. Don't wait until tomorrow. Today, encourage each other. You see, one of the remedies to unbelief, the writer highlights here, is a community that gives you positive vibration. It's a community. It's not people who will call you and say, you hear what is happening, the bad thing that is happening. You hear, oh, church, cool. You hear, oh, this, that. You don't. But when something good is happening at church, they don't call you and say, guess what? Something is good. You need to be at church tomorrow. I'm being real today. We need people around us who will be encouragers, who will be motivators. You know, one, one of the ways I think of myself, I think of myself as a destiny helper. I seek out people who may even feel like they don't have no path, they don't have no purpose. I try to seek people who, who feel like they're down and out, and I try to push them. I try to speak life to them. I try to speak hope to them. One of the things I like about the chat group that Agent Code has now, every morning Sister Dotlin sent a word of encouragement, a, a devotional to everybody. So if you, have, if you are down, there is a word for you on the Agent Code chat every single morning. And you know what I am happy about? is not pastor sending it like his pastor alone reading Bible. He's a member. He's one of our members that's sending out the encouragement to these members every morning. That's the kind of crowd I want to be a part of. I don't want to be a part of a crowd that every day they send to me what Corona is doing uh, and what is happening uh, and all the conspiracy that they can find so that I just lock my head under my covers uh, and don't want to come out. The kind of friends I want to be around. I want to be around people who will encourage me. Because you see, sin is very deceitful. That's what the writer said. It is, it is going to be rosy. It's going to be hidden. It's like a bait. Anybody ever do fishing? Sister Blake has, is, has been telling me she wants to do a day of fishing. But I don't know how I'm going to get her to put on those um, worms on it. Because she don't like those kind of things. But, 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 but you see, when you use a, a bait to catch fish, it, it, is, it is attractive to the fish. The fish see it as something that will be beneficial to him or her. Right? And then what the fish does, grab it 
but didn't know that there was a, it was just a lure to get them trapped. And that's what sin does to us, brothers and sisters. When we enter into sin, bad patterns form. Our conscience is snared and our heart become hardened. A heart of unbelief. Because the people of God kept on complaining. They never entered God's rest. Brothers and sisters, shut down people who are complainers. People are always finding the faults and not finding solutions and encouraging, motivating you. Shut them down. But encourage, because the Bible says we must what? Encourage each other daily. As long as it's called day. And by night you're sleeping so they can't call you and discourage you. But encourage you. I think I need to stop here today. Glory to God. You get the message. But let us, let us focus our thoughts on Jesus. Follow God in faith with our whole heart. And let us fellowship with people who encourage each other. If you, you need to, we need to check ourselves and say, what are the, the, the words that I speak very regular? Even about this current situation. How, what, what is it? What's my perspective on it? Because, you see, God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of what? Power. Of love. And of a sound mind. I want to close today with this story. Many years ago, a submarine was rammed by another ship and quickly sank despite many efforts. And those who, sometimes I will just go on YouTube and I will listen to some of these documentaries about submarines or any kind of interesting information. And you know when a submarine sank and it goes to certain depths, that, that's it. They say that you, you die in seconds that you don't even feel it. I don't know how they know that, but they say it. You die in seconds. And so these guys had rammed into a, a ship that rammed into them. They sank despite many efforts by many ships to rescue the crew. It was fear that the oxygen would run out long before anyone could get to them if they even survived the, the wreck. Hours into the desperate tragedy, a sonar man, or a sonar, sonar man listening for any indication of life on the crippled sub heard a tapping. Suddenly he heard something. And he realized it was dots and dashes of Morse code. The question, and Morse code is a code that they would use when, you know, they're in distress or whatever. That military people would understand. And the message that came from that submarine was, is there any hope? Is there any hope. Imagine those men trapped into that thing under the depths of the sea and they, their last level of oxygen I imagine might be running out and they're tapping tapping continue. Is there any hope? Somebody might be in a situation like these men today. Maybe you're feeling down, real down, depressed. Maybe you're feeling hopeless but just tap, just tap, just tap. And I'm hearing your tapping. Is there any hope for me, pastor? And I want to say to you, there is hope in Jesus. There is hope in Christ Jesus. I want you to stand with me today because I am a hope dealer today. And I want somebody to know that there is always hope. Because Jesus rose from the grave. Jesus is alive and well. And he has given us the hope. Hallelujah. 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 My hope is built. And nothing less. Let's sing the song. Hallelujah. And today, I don't know where you are in your life. But I hope this morning that you understand that there is hope for you in Christ Jesus. Your situation is not too bad for Jesus to fix it. It's not too hopeless for it to turn around. And so this morning, I encourage you to turn your hearts to Jesus. Turn your heart over to Jesus. Cry out to him. Ask him, Lord, help my unbelief. Help me, Jesus. If you are here and you even feel like walking to the altar because you are dealing with something that may seem hopeless, I want to pray a special prayer for you. 
And I don't want to really know what it is because Jesus knows all about your struggles. And he will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song two times. And if you're coming, you come. And we're going to pray for those who are now reaching out on social media. Text or, or tell us how we can pray for you. Where you need us to pray. And we'll put it before God. Hope is built on nothing, nothing less, less but Jesus. Can we just raise our Jesus both hands? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I dare not trust, I dare not trust the, the sweetest spring, but only trust in Jesus' name. Oh, hey. Say, Lord, Christ, oh, my cornerstone, oh, we may strong in the Savior's love, oh, Lord, through the storm, He is Lord, He is Lord. Can we sing that chorus one more time? Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord. Cornerstone. Yes, Lord. We make strong in the Savior's love. Father, we thank you this moment, Lord. We thank you that somebody is receiving hope today. We thank you, God, that somebody has received the word of hope, knowing that no matter where they are, Jesus can reach them. No matter where you are today, Jesus is willing to come there to get you, to help you, to lift you. And so in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a word today, for blessing our hearts with your word. For may your anointing, God, remind us and touch our hearts and our minds that, God, we need you more than anything else. I pray that somebody today who is struggling and don't know what to do will try you. Because I know, God, if they do, they will never regret it. I pray for your people today who are struggling to believe in whatever situation that they're dealing with. That God, you will give them hope and strength to endure. Lord, I thank you today for those who have brought their offering into your house. And, oh God, are ready to give back that which you have given to them. I pray, Holy Spirit, that your, your anointing will just flow upon them. And God, even as you give it back to them in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, let not be their fo that be our focus. But God, you may choose to give it back to us in good health. You may choose to give it back to us in favor, in opportunities, in any way you choose. So as they give, Lord, may they be open to how you will give back to us. As we give you honor and praise. Bless the offering to your service. As we seek to give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus name. Let somebody praise the Lord. Glory to God. We're going to come and give. But before we give. Let me just ask you to repeat this after me. I am highly favored. I'm richly blessed. I am not a victim. But I'm a victor. I am more than conqueror through Christ who loves me. For greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. God bless you today as you continue to worship and give God praise. Continue to sing this song as you come to worship, to give in worship. And the Lord bless and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. 
be gracious unto you. Lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. To those who are giving online, go to agentcourtcog.ca and give on our website. Or you can go to, you can give at finance at agentcourtcog.ca. We will be sending off our Christmas box, boxes today. If you want to support and get a chance, you still can do so by donating $10 to help us send them. Join, please remember to join our Zoom prayer zone this evening. At 6 p.m., we begin at 6 to 7. Tuesday, oh, we continue our fasting service right here at 10.30 and we'll be hosting we'll be hosting online christmas service this year so you will get more detail later on but it's good to have you thanks again for coming and god bless you as you have a great day please be safe we continue to keep uh, keep you in our prayers as we continue to thank god for you god bless you please eyeball somebody uh give them an eyeball and Greet them as we go. God bless you. Have a great day. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord. For what he has done for me, I feel like running, skipping, praying.